Hey guys, Mike, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're gonna show you how to rebuild a Stromberg 97. Now we have two Strombergs here on the bench. Uh, I need both of these for my flathead that I am uh, redoing. Uh, with the help of Steve, our Stromberg expert, we're gonna show you guys how to rebuild these. Now, uh, this may also uh, work with the 81s and the 48s. There are differences between all three carbs, but this process is fairly similar for all three. So I'm gonna get Steve over here. He's gonna help me tear these apart. Uh, we're gonna throw them in the Eastwood ultrasonic cleaner to clean them up, and then we're gonna work on rebuilding them. So let's get to work. That was the accelerator pump linkage, right? Yeah, that was moving the accelerator pump linkage. Like, this is the, the throttle linkage on the 97 has a removable detent here. The 48 does not have that. I usually just pull that out so I can go in the cleaner also make sure it gets clean. And you got to make sure you don't lose the little spring. Yeah. Because they disappear faster than you can believe. <laughs> Just turn around and they're gone. They spread their legs. Just go. Mm hmm. All right, now I'm ready to remove the top. All right, here we go with the top cover. Wow, the gasket looks like it's brand new. Yeah. This is the accelerator pump itself. Um, you have to save the rod and the springs and the retainer. The kit generally comes with new felts and a new washer, but it doesn't come with the whole pump itself. You got the one spring there. The retainer just slips into a groove on there. You push it down a little bit and well, yeah, it's, it's just that easy. You pull this spring down is what you do. And the washer. And then it just falls off and you lose it. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> just like that. Simple as that. Yep. Yep, we got a new one in the kit. These parts we should be okay with. Gasket. Float out. There, nice. Give that a quick shake, make sure there's no fuel in it. And you can take the needle and seat out. Now the float, we still want to put in water to make sure it doesn't have holes in it, right? Yeah. That's another nice thing about the ultrasonic cleaner. You automatically check that when you throw it in there because it floats. Yeah. If it doesn't float in the ultrasonic cleaner, you got you have the answer to your question. Yep. Yeah, I just you know, always try to check the tip. Yeah, look at the tip. You can always basically you can see a a little bit of a pattern on it mm -hmm. as long as it ain't grooved up it really doesn't look that bad no that comes with a new one of those we don't need to clean that these are for the idle circuit it's idle i guess i don't know if it's an air bleed or what you ever see problems with those holes collapsing at all no the, these you can't these they you can't crush so yeah yeah i mean they, they get pretty nasty sometimes but i always get them in Blow them out a little bit, make sure that they're moving air. And you got to be careful hanging on to them because you can launch them all the way across the shop. <laughs> sure. It's like an air, air powered rocket. Uh huh. Now we will get the base off. Always important to use the biggest screwdriver you can 
with the Strombergs because the screws are very specific to Strombergs and if you mess them up it's no good. Alright, here's the body, here's the base, it seems to be moving okay. Screws. Yeah, the idle mixture screws. These you have to watch also, because I don't know. At some point, a lot of them get turned in way too hard, and they end up with a big groove there, and they they just don't do anything then, you know. And I've had them also where they're very loose in the base, and they they leak air around them. You know, make sure you got a decent fit, and it's got a good point on it, and there's no big groove around the mm -hmm. the tip there. Yep, they good. All right. We don't bother taking the butterflies off or anything. It just goes in the cleaner just like that. Yep. All right. Huh. We need this one. All right. Now for the fun part where the magic is. Again, always use the largest screwdriver you can because these things are hard to tighten, hard to keep from leaking, and all right, these are the weld plugs. That's one of the emulsion tubes. This is the other emulsion tube, and then this is huh, I forget what they call that. And for the jets. You need a Stromberg specific jet tool. Don't try to take them out with anything else. It won't work. And they should not be very tight. You shouldn't tighten them very much. If you do, you have you end up crushing your emulsion tubes. So they shouldn't be real tight. There we go. What do we got in there? Does that say 51 or 54? Fifty one. Oh, okay. That's a little I think uh forty five is stock in a ninety seven. And generally speaking everybody just runs from what I've seen from taking them apart, everybody put forty eights in them, forty eight jets, which I believe are stock on a forty eight. What'd you put in the Merc? The Merc got forty eights, I believe. Yeah, that's that's fifty one also. Yeah, so that is the jets and then we just have this just has a screw head here and it's just a little oh this is the check valve for the accelerator pump accelerator pump that's right you should hear there's a little valve in here you should hear it rattling <clears throat> oh this one didn't have a power valve in it hmm I wonder why that is Interesting. Power valve goes in the bottom of the well right underneath the accelerator pump. The accelerator pump. So yeah, there wasn't one in there. Now we're going to remove the emulsion tubes. This is very important in a Stromberg because almost all of them that you find are crushed. What size tap are you using? A number six, 32. And you don't have to go in far. I usually go in four or five turns. That's it. That's all you need. Just carefully get that out. Get the other one. It's just brass you're tapping into, so it goes it goes in and out fairly easily. And Steve has a specialized puller. <laughs> we'll use specialized because it's just a number six screw with a washer and a nut. Yep. It's pretty simple. Yeah, and I, that's not an original. I I. I I saw that on the internet and it worked quite well. And then what you do is use the, I trim the washer down a bit there. Thread this into the end of the emulsion tube. Okay. 
get the screw in there fairly tight tighten down on the nut and hopefully the emulsion tube pulls right out they're just a press fit they're not in there they shouldn't be in there incredibly tight if they are something's wrong and how easy the jets came out they're probably not in there that tight no no the jets came out real nice yeah they weren't boogered up and smashed in <clears throat> yep and that's the cause of what we're going to look at is over tightening the jets crushes the emulsion tube which gives you all kinds of problems right which gives you drivability issues you will never be able to tune out of the carb if you'd like one of these pullers steve sells them on his website for <laughs> three easy payments of $29.99 <laughs> right there we go there's your emulsion tube so Steve got that loose, but the emulsion tube comes all the way up here to the Venturi. So they come all the way, they're about yay long. So they're a pretty long piece. Mm-hmm. How's that one look? This one does not look bad. It doesn't look crushed. What you have to look for on the emulsion tubes is these holes right here at the top. There's two. The older ones had three or four holes. The newer ones had two holes. Uh, when you over tighten the jets tighten right up against the bottom of the uh, right up against the bottom of the tube and if you over tighten the jets you'll crush these and they won't draw right let's see if i can hold up the camera yeah. and get a good look right, there we go so this one as you can see only has two we'll pull the other one out and the big thing is they need to match side to side so hopefully when we pull the other one out they're the same. Mm hmm. Oh, there we go. There's number two. All right. This tube also looks good. The holes are good on this one, not crushed at all. Those are both good to reuse. Woo! <laughs> you can also tell that they're crushed because there's sometimes a line in the brass where you can see the brass has been compressed, right? Right. Sometimes it's, yeah, sometimes it's so bad, you, you just look at it, you can see it bulged out that it's just, it got crushed that badly. Yeah, so don't go overboard with tightening your jets up. We'll cover that when we put it back together. <laughs> yep. All right, I think we are disassembled and ready for soaking. And then for... Oh, we do a wash and wax. We're going to make them real pretty. Okay. These okay. came apart nice. They're not a disaster, so I think just using a little soap would, would be fine. Well, using a lot of soap would be better, I guess. It's all right. <laughs> so it's just regular water with a little bit of soap. Yep. We're going to make some Stromberg soup. Ready for the noise? Sure. with our 90 minute bath. Time to pull it out. It's not too murky. So no, that's not like bad it. at all. And the float is still floating, mm -hmm. which is always a good sign. <laughs> yes, it is. Still good, yep. <laughs> kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I wish you could say the same about the set. That one is uh, not too attractive. I'll throw that one right in. So the second one of mine is... Uh, Pretty rough. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's a tale of two carburetors. One looked pretty nice, the other one not so much. <clears throat> we 
we can't get the jets out, right? Right. The jets. The power valve. Jets and the power valve. Are Everything stuck. else came apart. So that one's going to go in the hot tub mm -hmm. for 90 minutes. <laughs> Cover it up, keep it hot. All right. Oh man, look at that. That came out real nice. Uh -huh. Are the jets in the drawer? Uh, yeah, there should be um, a bag of them, and there's a drawer marked parts. There should be a, like a little Ziploc bag of them in there somewhere. Screwdriver. Gotta get yourself a holding the screwdriver. Yeah. This this gets a little interesting sometimes. <laughs> Drop it down the hole and hope it lands. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right. Yeah. And all the basically all the screws just get snug. Nothing needs to be. Nothing. No. Nothing needs to get real tight. Just. Yeah, you can't go gorilla on them because everything warps, but you get a little cleaning brush to go up through the, comes out the top there, clean everything out of the or where the orifice tube sits. Oh yeah, nice and clean. And you got to make sure you put these in the right way. It can only go in two different ways because they got the the flat machined flats machined on. So you got to make sure that the the tip, the pointy part, is pointing up into the venturi, and that just drops in there. Yep, here we go. Oh. Heard it hit home. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Just heard her hit home again. There we go. All right. Check valve. Again, not too tight with the jets or you will crush the emulsion tube. And while not completely necessary, the sealer is nice. These well plugs can very often be a hard to keep from leaking. So I just get just as little on there as I can. On both sides of the gasket. Okay, here we go. 
is time for the base. Float level on the Stromberg is supposed to be an eighth inch, which is this little one right here. I've kept this for a while because this is a good one. Hold it across there. When when the float comes up and shuts the fuel off when it's at the top, you got to measure it. Measure it. It should be up to eighth of an inch right there. It's usually at least close enough. If not, you got to bend. You have to bend the little tab there that pushes against the needle. Getting this together, you got to get the accelerator pump in there, and you got to make sure you don't roll the gasket on there. So make sure the gasket starts in there without catching any edges and goes down smooth. So a piece of like felt, correct? Uh, this, the real ones are leather. They make mm. some of them out of rubber. I'm not sure exactly. Mm. Well, I think le leather is generally what they use for them. Gotcha. Tent. Should give that a little oil. Stick it back in there. Make sure your accelerator pump moves nice and nice and smoothly uh, put your detent back in there with a little oil on it just oil on the pivot smooth choke action rod. 
Alrighty, with Steve's expertise and the Eastwood Ultrasonic Cleaner, this thing looks fantastic. Thankfully, this one was kind of gone through before by someone and it was fairly clean on the inside, just missing a few little pieces, which obviously Matt had in his stash. Um, but went together really quickly, cleaned up really nice. Uh, looks fantastic. Second one is in the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll probably have to do two or three uh, cleaning sessions to get it all apart. Some of the uh, jets are stuck into the middle body. So this one needs a little bit of work. But hopefully this video was helpful for uh, rebuilding your Stromberg 97. Like I said in the beginning, this will also apply to the 48s and 81s, but some internal pieces will be different, but it will help you to take it apart, clean it, and then reassemble it. Thanks guys for watching. See you later.